fighting. Fuck yeah. A little bit out of breath. Just got in a wrestling match with my agent. Literally. Not even a joke. Fuck yeah. How's everybody doing? You guys excited? Woo! Exciting times. Love it. Been living in LA for a few years. It's crazy. Saw a used condom on the sidewalk the other day. It's pretty wild, right? <laughs> Made me wonder, like, how could somebody be so dirty to leave a used condom on the sidewalk, yet so clean to use a condom? <laughs> you know? Like, where do you draw the line in your morals? <laughs> Oh, I don't want to catch herpes, but I'll leave this syphilis grenade here for a baby to trip over. <laughs> the baby could trip over that. A grown adult woman could trip over that. She lands the wrong way. She could get pregnant. <laughs> I mean, she'd have to get pregnant pretty easily, you know? Already have like 20 kids. Have some kind of nickname from her friends, like fetal juice. <laughs> Crazy times right now. It's good that you guys are here enjoying a show away from your smartphones. They control us now. You know, we can't <laughs> stop looking at them all the time. It's like everything. Like dick pics are a thing. You guys all know what dick pics are. It hasn't always been that way. It's because of technology that you even know what that is. 10 years ago, you wanted to show a girl a picture of your dick. You had to carry a picture of your dick in your pocket. <laughs> you have to pull it out at some point and go, hey, this is my dick. And you'd have to put it back in your pocket. Probably have to be a Polaroid picture, right? You have to hold out the camera, get it, because you couldn't get that picture developed at your local drugstore. <laughs> Remember that? You just have to get pictures developed from a human being. <laughs> so it'd have to be a Polaroid, right? You have to stick it out there, hope that you got the right angle, wait for it, right? Shake it, maybe even <laughs> blow on your own dick. <laughs> just to know if you got the shot. But now dick pics are flying around everywhere, all in the universe. A lot of you have them on your phones right now. <laughs> Random dicks. <laughs> it's fun. Truth is, guys, I don't even want to be a comedian. Yeah, truth is, I want to be a movie star. Unfortunately, nobody right now in Hollywood's casting for a 14-year-old villain. <laughs> but when they do, it's just going to be me. <laughs> Saw a great movie the other day about a, a sniper. Yeah, it was the uh, Kurt Cobain documentary. 100% headshots, this guy. Fuck yeah. Like the reaction to that. Good Burbank afternoon reaction. <laughs> <Thank you. clears throat> Let's talk about it. What else? A lot of stuff's happening in the world right now. A lot of racial tension, right? It's crazy. It's so sad. Big church shooting last week. Unbelievable. Of course, every time I've ever been in a church, I was hoping somebody would shoot me in the head. But, uh, all right. Audience definitely doesn't like the dark stuff. Let's go, uh, let's switch it back and go full Christian material for you guys. Mm. Yeah. Fun stuff. This would be one of the parts where they edit to another part. It's fun. <laughs> so this part right here isn't going to be in anything. This is just for you 25 people. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Anything can happen right now. Like if you want to yell or fart or anything, right now is the time. Okay. I'm excited about things though. I really am. Life is good. Comedy's a fun job. It's not the best job in the world. Best job in the world goes to boxing ring announcer Michael Buffer. Mr. Let's Get Ready to Rumble. This guy gets paid a million dollars every time he says those words. That's a real thing. A million dollars. 
unbelievable, right? Gets jetted all around the world to sold out arenas that he doesn't have to sell a ticket for. Gets handed a card that he doesn't have to write. He just reads it. This guy's in this corner, that guy's in that corner. Let's get ready to rumble. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Takes a three month vacation after that. <laughs> the only person more impressive to me than Michael Buffer is the UFC ring announcer. His name is Bruce Buffer. <laughs> is that a coincidence? No. They're brothers. <laughs> oh, they're the Buffer brothers. <laughs> and they have a monopoly on the in-ring announcer game. Bruce is even more impressive to me than Michael, because Bruce Buffer's big catchphrase, get ready for it, it's time. <laughs> That's the entire catchphrase. <laughs> almost like he was looking at his already successful older brother going, let's get ready to rumble. And Bruce is like, dude, why all the hard work? Why are you putting in 15 seconds of work when you need to only put in a good seven seconds? What I want to know is, is there a third buffer brother? You know, the loser youngest buffer brother that never made it. You know, he's just out there struggling. You're gonna know it if you ever run into him sometime. You're just gonna hear it. You're gonna hear, welcome to Chili's. <laughs> you get weird, that part where he has to announce the heights and the weights of the people that eat at Chili's, you know? <laughs> Not the healthiest clientele. Standing five foot one, weighing 625 pounds, the diabetic dragon. Chili's fans in this room. I like that. It's a good energy here. This might be one of my finer pieces of art ever. I'm excited about it. <laughs> really excited. <clears throat> Fuck yeah. It's fun. Anyway, let's talk some more. I'm a little upset right now. No, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to back out and do something else. You guys wouldn't like that. You've already groaned at all the other dark stuff, so let me see if I have any clean jokes for you people that I could do. You guys are a really fun crowd. I really like this. It's like, I'm totally having the time of my life right now. Let's talk about it. Okay, you guys would probably like that one. Let's do that one. You guys are a cheesy crowd. You like cheesy jokes, right? Yeah, there you go. Fuck yeah. First applause break of my set. Basically insulting yourselves. I love that. It's great. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I love smoking pot. Any pot smokers here? Fuck no, there's not. Absolutely not. Ha <laughs> ha. Next time, smoke pot before going to see a comedy show, people. It'll make things more fun. I don't mind if you don't smoke pot, but just have a good excuse. Bad excuses are the worst. Like, I can't stand when people say, I don't like to smoke pot because it makes me feel like I'm having a heart attack. That's exactly why I love smoking pot. That's exciting. Thinking you're having a heart attack and not actually having one, that's awesome. A lot of people pay a lot of money to go skydiving and whitewater rafting so that they can get their heart racing as fast as I can on my couch watching House of Cards. <laughs> The other day I went to my doctor's appointment high. Yeah, that takes fucking balls. <laughs> Actually, I smoked pot and then remembered I had a doctor's appointment and didn't know whether to cancel or not. I went through with it. A few minutes in, doctor's not saying anything about it. I started thinking to myself, wow, they've gotten really good at getting high. To fool your own doctor. It's Jedi level pot smoking. So. A few minutes later, doctor's still not saying anything. I started thinking to myself, wow, my doctor sucks. If this guy can't tell that I'm high, then what else is this idiot missing? <laughs> Start thinking to myself, what if he's high? And he doesn't want me to know that he's high. <laughs> and we're in the exact same position right now. At the end of the appointment, he never said anything about it to me. He just wrote me another prescription for medical marijuana and I was out of there. <laughs> it's almost like a perfectly written joke or something. <laughs>
just built a place right around the corner from where I live called Just Food for Dogs. <laughs> this is a place where you take your dogs so they can get a restaurant style meal while you sit there and watch. <laughs> Which means there's a chef right around the corner from where I live that only cooks for dogs. <laughs> Which means there's a chef right around the corner from where I live that is so fucking terrible at what he does for a living. Do you have any idea how shitty of a chef you have to be to get out of the human being game? <laughs> to where you're like, fuck these opinions. Give me that animal that eats anything. <laughs> this is a guy so bad at cooking food that he wants to cook for one of his buddies and his pal tried it and he's like, dude, I wouldn't feed this shit to my dog. And the other guy's like, well, I'll show you. <laughs> So wish this was a crowd work show where I could just make fun of all of you one after the other, but you don't have a camera on you. So I'm just gonna keep doing material right down the gullet. You have no idea what I'm even talking about right now. <laughs> I'm loving this. The looks on your guys' faces are priceless. I'm wondering exactly how much longer you have to sit here for the next hour or so, right? Okay. Now you just stare at me like I'm not telling the truth. Very good. This is Again, great, you guys are just completely turning on me right when I like you the most. Um, okay, let's do another jokey pie, shall we? Um, all right. I'm all, about, I'm all about equality. Racial tensions are high right now, and I'm all about equality. That's why I ask you this. Why don't black people have their own color Band-Aid yet? I'll let you think about that for a second. It's a good question. It's a great question. I never wondered it until last week. I'm doing a show. There's a cool black guy in the front row with a Band-Aid across his forehead. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. It hit me right then and there. They only make Band-Aids in the color of white people. If a black person gets a cut, they have to become a little bit white. It's time for the black Band-Aid. We have a black president. It's time for the black band. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, what else? It's fun. They're gonna have to edit the shit out of this set. It's gonna be so funny. <laughs> I've said so many ums and fucks and everything. It's just completely blown out. It's really great. Again, you guys have no idea. Half of you aren't even looking at me. This is really exciting. I'm so used to performing in front of live audiences, so this is a little bit different for me, what we're doing here today. They said they're gonna add a laugh track, like a loud, they're gonna add laughs to this. No, no, they really, they really are. This is a production. I don't know if any of you even speak English. I don't know exactly what's going on here. But I really wish they just would have added the laughs like during the set. And I wish they just had speakers or perhaps just Skyped this to an actual audience that is interested and like recorded their laughs and played it like during this instead of just adding it later. Is any of this making sense to any of you? <laughs> okay. Fuck yeah, it's a really weird crowd. I love this, really exciting. How do I close a party like this? Um, okay. You guys wouldn't get that, you wouldn't get that, you wouldn't get that. Let's do this. Let's spoon feed you one right down the middle and see if this hits at all. This is the theme of this set. Like you, sir, what are you staring at right now? What were you just looking at right then? One of the light bulbs, right? <laughs> like, did you, just no like, did you just notice those now? Probably. Probably. You can't even commit to a yes on that. <laughs> So probably, you don't even know if you noticed them yet or not. You're just staring at it right now. Are you getting this guy with that camera? So probably, do you remember whether you noticed it before? If I did, then I would have said yes to that. If you did, then what? I would have said yes to that. Right. 
but maybe you, maybe you don't remember. Maybe maybe it took a little more time for you to think back. So you really just don't know whether you noticed it or not, but you certainly re-noticed it at some point during all that. Do you have any hanging lights at your place? No, not like a chandelier? No. Probably, probably. I really like it. It's almost like, you know, it's pretty interesting for a guy that hasn't been able to answer a question how many light bulbs are going off over your head. Like, it seems like you'd have a lot of great ideas, <laughs> but you can't even answer yes or no questions about blatant things. Guys, I had so much fun with you here this year. <laughs> I mean, really and truly, I had a blast here. I had so much fun. I made fun of you a lot. I called you basically a dumb audience. I called you sort of stupid. I said that half of you weren't paying attention, but I really, really, that's what I like. A lot of comedians, they like big, crazy live audiences that laugh and respect the comedians and listen to them word for word and don't panic when it gets too edgy. But I really like you guys because you're humbling. You know, you take a guy like me who tours all around the world and uh, writes on some of the funniest things and you really just brought me back to reality. I almost feel like one of you, like maybe I should join you after this. Like maybe I should just sit in the middle of this audience and show you guys how it's done. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs>